All right, in this URDF tutorial, I will show you how to use Zacro properties and Zacro macros in your URDF files. So I will start off by going over the Zacro command, go over the robot state publisher method, the URDF launch file, and then talk about the Zacro property, Zacro macro, show you how to use a URDF using Zacros in the same file, and then URDF using Zacros in separate files. So to use the Zacro command, the way to use it is have the Zacro uh, command here, followed by the macro.zacro and greater than model.urdf. So what this will do is take your Zacro file and convert it to a URDF file using the Zacro function. The next way to use Zacro is using the robot state publisher. So you could use this inside of your launch file. So for this, you need to have the path to your URDF. And then inside of your launch file, you could have a launch ros.actions.node. We're going to use the package robot state publisher. And then the parameters that we'll be passing is a robot description. And we're going to be running the Zacro command inside of the launch file to convert our uh, Zacro file into a URDF file. The third way is using the URDF launch package inside of your Zacro file. So inside of here, what we're going to do is call our find package share the URDF launch. And then inside of here, we're going to have a URDF package with the description of your robot and followed by the model name of your um, file. So let's talk about Zacro properties. So Zacro properties are useful when the same property shows up at multiple places. And this lets you change the value of all instances at one location instead of having to modify it all the places individually. So the way to declare a property is to have the Zacro colon property and then name equals property name. And then the value equals some value that you set. So to actually use a property, you would put it somewhere inside of your code where you say variable equals and then um, using the money symbol the dollar symbol, and then followed by these brackets, curly braces, and the property name. So the Zacro macro, so here macros are used to replace several lines of XML code with the option of having input parameters. So this is useful when several lines of code are repeated inside of your files. So to declare a macro, what you're going to do is say Zacro colon macro, and name equals macro name, and parameters equals the list of your parameters. And then you have some logic in the middle, and then followed by the close Zacro macro. And to actually use this macro, you would say Zacro macro name, and parameter equals the value of the parameter that you want to set. So your DF using Zacros in the same file, we could take a look at this example file here. So we can see for our um, number four here. So here we actually could declare our Zacros inside of our files. So if we take a look at this file, we can see that in here, we have to find our Zacro properties up on top. And then, for example, this is a Zacro macro. So in this case, we're using this for a chunk of code for our inertial properties. And you can see if we want to actually use it, then we could find you know, the location that we're using this uh, default inertia here. So you can see, for example, you could just call Zacro default inertial and then pass in the mass parameter. So that's how it looks like. And then if we go ahead and run this, we could see what is happening just to verify that it works. So I could run this uh, launch command here, um, our launch file, and you can see that it renders our robot all working. So next up, we could use URDF using Zacros in separate files. So we could go ahead and take a look at the general structure. So we're going to have a separate Zacro file that has this structure here with the XML version, your robot, and you have to include this tag here for the Zacro. And then you might have some property and some macros inside of your Zacro file. And then using your Zacro file, so uh, notice that this separate file is going to be called file name.zacro. And then inside of your main file that's using the Zacro file is going to be called something.urdf.zacro. And inside of here, to actually use the file, you're going to say Zacro include and then the file name, which is file name.zacro. 
So in this example, we're going to actually use um, our robot parts as a Zacro file that we're moving all of our macros in. And then our uh, robot example, Zacro external URDF uh, number five one, that's going to be using it. So you can see here, we've used all of our um, macros here inside. So you can see we have different macros. We have a default inertia macro. We have a wheel macro. We have a lake macro. And then we have a gripper macro. So the reason we split up these macros is because we have a left and right for the, these different parts. And there's no need to repeat our code. So if we look at our example here, you can see that uh, our example has been simplified by a whole lot because we use the property of symmetry. And you can see here we have included our file name. So just to take a look at a few, you know, we have our default inertia here and we have our uh, different gripper, Zacro, and so on. So this really simplifies our code. So we'll go ahead and run this just to verify that our new example is working. So if I run our launch file, you should see our robot show up. And you can see it behaves exactly the same. So we know that by separating our file into these Zacros, nothing has broken. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about the URDF tutorial using the state publisher. So go check that out. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.